Tonight really is a tribute to many friends that we've lost to this disease. We have some of their pictures. They bring back uh, memories. They run very, very deep. And I know how hard it is for family members to be here tonight. We very appreciate your bravery to come tonight. They gave it their all. They tried so many ways to help themselves and help others. They gave blood, they gave biopsies. We honor them and we remember their fight and their dignity and their courage. Tonight we're also here to tribute our many survivors, uh, many shown from all over the world here who continue to battle pancreas cancer. And, and thanks for being so tough and inspiring us every single day and for working to help others because what you're doing now is helping countless thousands of others. And tonight's an attribute, uh, tribute to the incredible advocates and volunteers in this room who spend so much time raising the dollars. And we have many pictures of the sponsors who do a crazy amount of work to raise funds. If you wanted to crazy, watch Liz just before this event tonight, a very, very difficult super lady here. And a tribute to the special board that we have to answer to about these funds. Uh, you can see the people here. And if you want to be reporting every three months to the president of the Boston Red Sox and the New York Yankees and Gary Fazio and some of these are very tough people, I'm glad I'm on the phone and not in person most of the time. So thank you for all that. And a tribute to the great sponsors uh, that you've heard about tonight. We treasure each and every one of you. So many step to the plate. Uh, and this tribute is to you. Also a tribute to my colleagues on the front lines at the bedside uh, and uh, in the clinic, in the trenches. Uh, many pictured here. I'm so glad many are here tonight. But tonight actually reminds me of a day back in 1981, about 38 years ago, and it was a barbecue joint in San Antonio, Texas. At noon, it was dark. There were peanuts all over the floor. And my boss, who was an expert in breast cancer, said, come on along, young man. I want to teach you something. And we met with this lady, Nancy Goodman Brinker. And she said to us at that time, I can't stand it. I just lost my sister. She was diagnosed with breast cancer at age 33. One in eight women would develop breast cancer. Enough is enough. Survival of stage four is terrible. I just have to do something. And she did for her sister. And that was the Susan G. Komen Foundation, which has raised now $3 billion. The dollars were important, but the most important thing, <laughs> amazing. So this is what actually happened. Breast cancer mortality decreased. It fell like a rock globally. It took 38 years, but it's dramatic what those advances were. And no matter how you look at it, whatever statistics, but it took the anger of the losses, the leadership, the determination, and look at the impact that had. Well, let's forward at what happened at Copper Square from Tijin downtown in 2002, 17 years ago. I got a call that a man wanted to meet with me, and uh, that was Roger. Uh, he said, I can't stand it. I lost my mother, Sina. Enough is enough. What can be done to help? And I said that the biggest problem we have is having laboratory, good laboratory work, but putting it into the clinic. Uh, we need dollars for pilot clinical trials. And Roger did that, and he said, let's start a golf classic. And as he walked out, he said, if not me, then who? So last but not least, Roger, you don't get any credit, but this is actually a tribute to you. And we're going to have my colleagues, we're going to pass out something special that's a special treat from us, me, Ann, and I. And uh, is there little dogs that says, Roger, dogged against pancreatic cancer. So we're going to get the money. Let's see if I can find it. Roger, would you come up here, please? <laughs> Where are you, Roger? He loves German shepherds, we know that. There you go. <laughs> How about that? Huh? It's okay. Well, I hope you enjoy the dogs. Are they all getting distributed? 
they'll throw them around. They're pretty good. Well, let's talk about the leverage of our efforts uh, that have taken place. As you can see here, Sina Magowitz Foundation now has raised about $12.5 million since 2002. And that actually has changed into, by leverage, about $125 million from uh, the National Institute of Health uh, and uh, Stand Up to Cancer, uh, many other foundations. But if you can imagine a tenfold leverage of these, and it's all because of the bravery of people doing the clinical trials and getting that clinical information and improving survival. So, and because of your gifts, we had to have a new model, though, because clinical trials usually cost in the hundreds of millions of dollars, as my colleagues will tell you. Try, we try to use the best science and technology discoveries from all over the world and apply them very rapidly in small clinical trials and look for a dramatic shrinkage of patient stage four cancers and see if just doing that in a small number of patients we could actually improve their pain and survival. We call it kind of guerrilla warfare trials that would be started within about 90 days, that was the dream, and those 90 days would be about 10 to 25 patients in the trial, and we'd look for dramatic shrinkage in the tumor. And then someone else could do the trials where it took 800 patients and get approval by the FDA. Now, what do we mean by a response? Response means that a tumor that's in the liver here, we call it Swiss cheese liver, that with, with therapy, you knock it back to this. So that means a major shrinkage, and that's always accompanied by an improvement in survival. What is the staging of pancreas cancer? Well, your pancreas makes a lot of enzymes. It's probably busy right now while you're eating. And it makes about 1,500 cc's of, of fluid every day that help you digest. And it also makes insulin. The staging is tumor only in the pancreas is one. Two is extended slightly beyond the pancreas. Three is extended to the nearby blood vessels. And you hear something about that in a minute. And four is spread to other parts of the body. Now, most patients present, as everybody in the room knows, with stage four disease because uh, it's silent. So we start the fight there. The first important message for the evening, when somebody says don't pl that you can't do anything for a person with stage four pancreas cancer, don't listen to them, because it isn't true. These are older statistics. There is improved survival for patients with stage four cancer. Clearly, there's a lot more work to do, but this will only be accomplished by more science and rapid application with dollars that come from a foundation like this. This is the progress to produce the major shrinkage of patients' pancreas cancer, and you have done this. Back in the old days, 5-FU, and then we did gemcitabine, and Cena one came in here, and you can see that all of a sudden, the response rates, in other words, the major shrinking, is 87 or 89 percent. I think most people would never thought we'd see that. No, it's thank you. The one-year survival rates for regimens have uh, been pretty bad in the past, but now we have up to 65%. And uh, these two latest studies, we don't even know the results yet. It's just too early. So we're hoping we see the same trend, which would be pretty good in the mattress industry right now, I think. The two-year survivorship for regimens has never been reported before, but now finally we're able to report two-year survivorships, three, four, and five. You have to be alive to get the next breakthrough, just like for breast cancer. This is an example of the final results of a rapid application. Gail Jamison, hope you're out there. Urquhart Borazanzi, you know Urquhart's here. And this was just published. You can see the great sponsors there in the Journal of American Medical Association in Oncology. And we call it the Tijan Triple, uh, named after the Arizona Diamondbacks, Larry Hall, Derek's father, in honor of Mr. Hall. This was done by great science with biopsy of the patient's tumor in the liver. Mike Barrett at the Mayo Clinic did all of the special sorting. I just want to point out this is technology. The technology represented in a key finding, a weakness in pancreas cancer, the underbelly of pancreas cancer. These tumor cells are out on a limb. They're just waiting for it to be sawed off. And we, so we added a drug. And uh, Roger, actually, since he's so become accomplished in this, he actually went to the meeting with Urquhart and I to present uh, the results. One other person showed up. This is a fellow that discovered Taxol. He is 92, and he was so glad to see it uh, uh, applied in pancreatic cancer, Dr. Wani. So Roger, your mother would be very proud, and probably more proud of this picture of you in a white coat. <laughs> yeah. 
Well, uh, we had a 71% response rate. Yale and the median survival went to 17 plus, and one year survivors, 65 and 40%, and we now have three year and four year survivors. There are several people out here who received this regimen who are alive and well today. We're very grateful for that, very grateful. And uh, for, we got a few surgeons in the audience, I see, and uh, this we never thought we'd see. We're total bowel obstruction here. This is the liver, metastasis went away, and that opened up a really dramatic effect. You can just imagine the improvement in pain. And I'll go past this. We all wish, actually, that the people who have given their time and treasure to this event, uh, you, could see the difference in patients and their families' faces uh, when they say they're out of pain in seven to 10 days, when they say their tumors actually shrink on x-rays. We thought we'd never see that. And some patients have become operable. Doug will talk about that in a minute. Toxicity is very, very reasonable, and it's now in a major confirmatory trial, as I said, sponsored by Celgene. But we're also worried about, just like everybody in this room, about the pancreas cancer coming back. And that's why we have two ongoing clinical trials to try to prevent that. One sponsored by the John Sabga Foundation, and there's his loving wife. Have you met? Natalie is a force of nature, just like Roger is, and uh, she is from Trinidad. And uh, she raised the dollars to take either the and Triple or Fofirinox and to try to uh, take this regimen for patients not only here but also in Trinidad uh, to try to prevent it from coming back. And we also have support from the Stand Up to Cancer uh, for the same drug that Jimmy Carter got to see if that will stop this pancreas cancer from coming back. Message number two for this evening is use these treatments not only for stage four, because that's what changed breast cancer earlier in the disease. When these are treated, when patients, stage four patients, uh, if you get the same regimen and use it earlier, it's called adjuvant therapy, uh, the five-year survivorship goes from, 50, from 20% without therapy to 50%. And these chemotherapy treatments used early in disease can even be used before surgery to make tumors operable. So the major message here is don't let folks go to surgery right away. Try to give them therapy because we know the tumor is spread. That was the secret in breast cancer. Everybody knows that women with breast cancer now get treated before or after, and that stops the tumor from coming back because by the time the tumor is palpable, it means it's all over the body. So you need to do the right thing, and we have a great leader in the audience tonight, Doug Evans. You'll hear from Doug who actually came up with this schema to use these drugs earlier in the disease. This has recently been published, and I just want to show you the major differences in survival. This was with the surgery alone and angemcitabine, our old drug, and look at how much improvement there is in progression-free and overall survival. This is really truly a miracle when you're getting 50% and above of patients now out five years, and you notice that it's flat, which means they're not recurring. That's a cure. So now, ERCUT is also working to use the chemotherapy before, and we have people out here, patients, and their families know this, who are getting this regimen to try to make patients operable. And ERCUT just presented this, and you can start seeing we have the survival curve here, flat. But in addition to working for patients with pancreas cancer and giving to this cause, I do want to let you know that we have Dr. Schroff uh, tonight uh, here, with, and she's an incredible investigator that we were able to see. Thank goodness she's in the state of Arizona now. She was at MD Anderson, where she came up with using this regimen to treat patients with cholangiocarcinoma, that's bile or gallbladder cancer. And she found that the response rate shrinkage was 45%, and the one-year survivorship went from 26 to 67% and some unresectable tumors became resectable, and I understand, Rachna, that uh, Dr. Schroff, she's here somewhere, I can't see her with the light, but um, could you stand up, because I want to get you have a round of applause. There she is. <laughs> Outstanding doctor, and uh, thank you for all you do, but this is what happens. It works in one disease, it can work in another. So in summary, thanks to your support, you've made a difference in survival for patients with stage four pancreas cancer. We continue going after achieving high response rates, and other trials are teed up. And I, I do want to show you, even though Roger will say, get down, Dan, here pretty soon, 
But uh, we have two ongoing trials. One is trying to coax the person's own immune system to recognize this tumor. It takes 25 years to grow, right? So why doesn't your immune system see it? Your T cells can't get into this tumor. And another way is increased free radicals. So here's an example. This is a killer T cell uh, eating a tumor cell. One of these T cells eats 50,000 tumor cells and destroys them every day. So it's a remarkable cell. The only problem is they're not getting into our pancreas tumors at all. So um, they're like the Phoenix police officers keeping these T cells out. And uh, just to let you know, there we have the Grand Slam. There are people out in the audience tonight who are on this where we're getting nearly 100% of patients' tumors shrinking in that direction. And Gail Jamison is using very, very high dose of scorbate uh, to try to destroy pancreas cancer. And the responses there have been very remarkable. We need to get to 100%. As I said, we're about 87, 89%. Now, message number three is there's a lot of great laboratory science. Finally, you know, you get some little advance, and all of a sudden, people start working on it. There's dollars there. The scientists can start working on it. Cholangiocarcinoma is the same, right? So uh, this is the number of publications by year. And you can see here it's gone up dramatically. Here's the problem. Of all these publications, only five are clinical. Okay, so lots of basic science work. So we need to test this science and technology right away in the clinic, and that's why we're here. And we're working with best, some of the best basic science minds in the world. Uh, this is just a sampling of them that to help us get these, these done. So message number four is we're going to continue this pilot study guerrilla warfare approach in patients with stage four disease, looking for this dramatic shrinkage, and then we need the fastest possible startup of these trials. We are only one center, right? And that's too slow. These are some of the ideas, lots of them, right? Lots of them. And here are some of the docs who are ready to help, and you'll hear here in a minute. And we think that tonight, by giving individual docs, say, go for it, do that in your 10 to 25 patients, this is going to be much faster uh, for patients. Uh, and, and get the job done faster, and you'll hear why in a second. We have them all over the world, including, uh, including Israel, and uh, we're gonna hear a word or two from a couple of them tonight. So the best six science ideas to get to the clinic as fast as possible. Now, as you know, my Moby Dick in life is pancreatic cancer now. It hasn't bitten off my leg yet, uh, but it has taken away so many friends. After 44 years of practicing medicine, I'm probably right about here, you know, I'm not totally bent over. But you know, if you look back, I was in the second school in Wisconsin to get the Salk vaccine because one of my classmates in a one-room schoolhouse developed polio and died from it. And you can imagine the mothers, how, 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 how nervous they were. So we got vaccinated. The needles were about six inches long, and my arm was two centimeters in diameter. <laughs> and these are over the years. I marvel that anybody would actually, uh, actually hire me. And then. Here I am in a nursing home. Uh, maybe Anne is back there somewhere, and I have no idea where I am. Maybe this is my great-granddaughter. But you know, it's OK. I could drink that Coca-Cola without any problem. So what else can we do together before I go to the nursing home? We need maximum devotion now to get these next series of young investigators funded, up, and running. So I'm curtailing all other activities. It's really the blocking and tackling that needs to be done to get these things really going. We need to put our single guerrilla warfare studies on steroids and epinephrine, you're gonna see the speakers here in a second, to lead to these faster advances, and to concentrate on early detection, because even these good regimens applied earlier is gonna be a gigantic number of increases in cures. So hopefully we've had older and maybe we're a little wiser here. Uh, we know there are actually some things we can do to help. Science is getting better. It just needs to be applied. And thankfully, just as you've seen from Dr. Schropp, that uh, we have investigators out here that are earlier in their career. But I say time goes fast, and time is of the essence. And you heard, wait is a four-letter word. So the last take-home message tonight is the best way to cure anything is to catch it early. And this is now known as cancer interception. That's the new term. Not prevention, this is cancer interception. And we have some leads on this. It does take 21, sometimes people say 25 years, that this tumor grows in a person before it becomes something that bothers them. So the earlier the better. 
the earlier the better. And there are some promising methods for early detection for cancer interception. Big data. We now know that if you study 270,000 people from Manuel's place, that if you have recent onset type 2 diabetes, and I bet you there's somebody here, and you've lost eight and a half pounds, you probably got pancreas cancer. Usually it would increase your weight. If you look at the number of people, how often they go on the website and, uh, and, and Google stomach pain, indigestion, they're a candidate for pancreas cancer. Your percent fat in an MRI. And the single blood tests that we're most excited about are called EVs. EVs are extracellular vesicles. These are things that bud off the tumor cells. They're a piece of the membrane. You do a blood test, and you can detect them. And they're unique covering, and they have unique content. And what they contain tells us what kind of cancer. So this is good for all kinds of different cancers. If you load them with a tracer, remember, these are part of the tumor. They go right back to that zip code. You can load them with a therapeutic agent. You might hear about one of these in a minute, and they'll go right back to the cancer. Very, very targeted. And the nice thing is, because of the Sina Magowitz Foundation, you're right in the middle of it, because the blood that was drawn from many of the patients here tonight can be used to, to test these methods. And sure enough, we're lucky to be part of a major grant from the National Cancer Institute. Here's the team just met last week from all over the world. And I just want to show you how wonderful this is. You can. Uh, pancreas cancer is red, purple is an early pancreas cancer, green is normal. You can see you can start to separate these. And uh, this is what you're looking for. I'm making an expert tonight. These are called receiver operating curves. Perfect curve is one that goes as a square. And you can see here that just in the first year and a half of work, we're at 0.95. One is perfect. That's how close we are for a blood test that's specific for pancreatic cancer. That's the way to achieve a cure rate. So shortly, you're going to hear from some really great world-class clinical investigators with creative new approaches and how they envision taking out this disease. But one thing I can guarantee you that the docs you're going to hear from and the people on our team is we'll never forget about the caring ever. It's the most important thing. And since we last met last year, there have been some changes in the Von Hoff family. My mother, of 96 years, passed away. My dad's still going at 99. Uh, this is Ann and I. Boy, we look good then, Ann. You know, that was beautiful, yeah. 46 plus, and there's Grandma. And these uh, kids, you can't see it, but they're all wearing Sita Magowitz golf tournament shirts, except the little one. We need one, Roger. <laughs> the real tribute tonight is a tribute to those loved ones and friends we've lost. Let's remember what they've given us, their impact against the disease. It's also a tribute to those who are here with us tonight, continuing their fight, and many are beating it. Pancreas cancer doesn't care who it hurts, does it? But we care. As investigators who receive these funds to do these trials, we promise you that we're going to outwork pancreatic cancer, and we're going to outthink pancreas cancer, and we're going to outsmart pancreatic cancer, and we plan to outlive pancreatic cancer. So the tribute tonight is thank you for all your incredible support to conquer this disease. And as a certain someone in the room might say, if not us, then who? Thank you. OK. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you.